Hello everyone. My name is Brittany White and I'm a physical therapist here at Payless Community Hospital. I've been working as a therapist here for the past 13 years and I've had the opportunity to work in the inpatient area, home health, and I currently now work in the outpatient area. Myasthenia gravis symptoms tend to progress over time, usually re reaching their worst within a few years after the onset of the disease. The muscle weakness caused by MG worsens as the affected muscles are used repeatedly. Therefore, symptoms usually improve with rest. You may ask then, why should I even consider exercise if my symptoms are going to be improved with rest? Well, unfortunately, after prolonged periods of rest, which may occur during episodes of MG, the muscles become so weak that performing activities of daily living and simple tasks can become very difficult. By exercising at the appropriate times and at the appropriate levels, you'll be able to improve your muscle strength and endurance and your overall function. Myasthenia gravis is sometimes referred to as the snowflake disease. Just as each snowflake is unique, each pre person presenting with MG is also unique. By learning to identify your uniqueness, you can learn to identify and monitor your symptoms at rest, activity, and while you're exercising. Only by listening to your body and identifying how you individually feel can you effectively perform exercise and improve your function. There's a lot of variance in symptoms with patients with my, um, myasthenia gravis in regards to which muscles are affected, the severity of that person's weakness and fatigue, as well as the length of an episode. No one pre patient presents the same. While one person may experience generalized weakness, others may only be affected with rep repetitive activities that induce the muscle fatigue. Therefore, no one exercise program is the same, and treatment strategies will differ from patient to patient and even within one person based on what they are doing at what specific time. Before starting any exercise program, it is important to check with your doctor or physician to make sure that it's okay. This is true with any disease, but it's particularly true with uh, myasthenia gravis. Exercising when myasthenia gravis is not stable or if you're not medically managed can result in a worsening of symptoms and even increase your risk for injury. Treatment, exercises, and goals. During an exacerbation, exercise is not appropriate. MG patients who are in exasperation have difficulty monitoring their own symptoms and can be at higher risk for injury. Therefore, focused at this time should be placed on energy conservation, safe mobility, transfers, and utilizing appro appropriate assistive devices, and if needed, focusing on fall prevention and home modifications. Once your MG is stable, consistent exercise will elevate your baseline function, which will help make you stronger and diminish the effects of MG. Now this won't happen overnight, and you shouldn't push too hard, as fatigue can still occur but by progressing slowly and following some guidelines, you can improve. You need to be the warrior now, but make sure you're a smart warrior. Myasthenia gravis exercise considerations. All stable MG patients who are exercising should consider five items. Number one, the dollar per day rule. This rule says that patients should use energy conservation with all daily activities. Patients should not exhaust themselves in the morning by using 75 cents of their dollar with exercise. It is also important to exercise at your best time of day. For most MG patients, this is in the morning. However, some individuals just aren't morning people. <laughs> it is also important that you exercise when your medications are at their peak dose. For pyrid pyrid dosedamine. <laughs> this is one and a half to two hours after taking it. Sorry about that. Um, it's also important to exercise the large proximal muscles of the body. These are the muscles close to your trunk, such as your shoulder girdles and your hip girdle muscles. Exercises should be done in short duration and should never exceed a moderate intensity. Mild to moderate exercise levels are those that are best recommended. So you may ask, what is moderate exercise? Moderate exercise intensity is an exercise that causes your heart rate not to elevate greater than 30 beats per minute from your resting baseline. 
It should not cause you to become weak, so short of breath at the peak of the exercise. And symptoms should not become worse during the exercise. So if you notice drooping of the eyelids or other symptoms start to become worse while you're exercising, you realize you've exercised too high of a level. Patients should not be still tired two hours after you're done with the exercise. And you should not have severe residual muscle soreness for the day or days after exercising. Types of exercises and devices that are utilized include the above machines. The upper body ergometer, which is down in the corner over on the left, uh, right, um, are utilized for arm exercises. And for the lower extremities, they recommend the stationary bike, the recumbent bike, which is stationary but kind of in a reclined position, um, as well as elliptical machines. However, if you do use an elliptical machine, they recommend that you have the stationary arm bars for added stability opposed to the ones that move. Um, these pieces of equipment are recommended because they are self-paced, meaning that you control how fast and how much you go, and they involve those large muscles, um, muscle groups and are relatively safe to use. So on the screen here are two examples of exercises that can be used to help improve your posture. They're very simple to do, and I'm going to demonstrate here for you in just a second. Um, but by doing these exercises and improving your posture, you can improve your breathing because you open up your lung capacity. You can improve your swallowing and you can also improve um, fatigue that you get from trying to hold your head forward and stuff when you have bad posture. So the first picture here is just squeezing the shoulder blades together. So everybody kind of sitting in your seat here, if you can sit up nice and tall for me and go ahead and squeeze your shoulder blades together. But what I want you to do, I already saw a couple of them out there, is try to keep your shoulders down and depressed. So if you notice here, there's an arrow show, showing the direction. We're not just squeezing together, because typically when people squeeze together, they tend to do this, <laughs> which ends up stressing us out even more. So what you're trying to do is squeeze your shoulder blades together and down to pull down. So you should kind of feel a little bit of a stretch up through the top here as you bring those shoulder blades together and down. As you're doing this, you want to try to bring your chin and just tuck it straight back. So not bringing it down like this, but instead coming straight back. Now when I do this, you'll notice that my shoulders go back and down, my chin comes back and down, and I'm opening up my whole chest cavity here. This allows more oxygen to go into the lungs and allows us to be able to be more efficient at breathing. The other thing is that when we're using our arms, when you're in a forward slumped posture, that's about as far as I can bring my arms up. However, if I'm in good posture, I'm able to raise them all the way up to here. So good posture is really, really important. 